Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another skill tree guide video for Total War Troy as we'll take a look at one of the upcoming DLC playable factions with their brand new leader and epic hero, Ajax. So Ajax starts out in the game with a very unique first skill, an active ability in the Herculean Throw. Now this is not a brand new skill to the game as this was in the game before as you will throw a boulder uh, at an enemy with a 100 meter range and the rock will cause damage with 45 second cooldown and no cost to rage. It's quite a good ability against single targets because the boulder despite being a rock is only going to hit a single entity so firing it into a group of units isn't going to do much whereas if you throw this at enemy general it will hurt quite a bit. And this obviously comes from a story in the Iliad itself as when Ajax and Hector were dueling under the city of Troy, they actually threw rocks at each other. And I think Hector started it by throwing a rock at our precious shield and we responded by throwing a bigger rock that almost killed Hector to the point where the gods have to come down and intervene as we are a giant of a man. Now beyond this skill, each time we level up we're able to pick from a skill uh, that's in the tree below. The level here is the restriction of our level and there is a secondary upgrade that is exclusive to the side that you pick for your first skill. So for example if we picked immovable force we lose access to everything on the left and so forth. If we have picked warning shot we would not have access to anything on the right and once we pick immovable force once we level up again we can pick anything below uh, the rank 3 skills and we have access between one of the two upgrades. So these are also mutually exclusive, just as the left side and right side. So let's talk about all these skills, give a good overview of what's good on Ajax and different ways you can build him. So when you first level up, you have the choice between Warning Shout, which is a boost for yourself as well as allies near you. The range is only 15 meters. It's not very far, it's a very small circle. But what you basically grant your units and yourself is flanking defense. So flanking is very vital in Total War Troy as it's a heavy infantry combat so maneuvering your units around for flanking bonuses is a big deal. And when you activate this what happens is for uh, the next 120 seconds your units that's around you will gain flanking defense uh, improving their survivability against getting flanked. So obviously this will be very useful if you find yourself in a flanked position, which you should probably try to avoid uh, to begin with. So I think this one has limited use. You can upgrade it in two different ways. You can increase the radius because 50 meters is rather small. You can boost it to 30 with this upgrade right here. Or you can come down here for defense, which will increase not only flanking defense, but also give 10% melee defense to the units, which is uh, evasion rate. On the other hand, you can go with Immovable Force, which is quite nice in my opinion. This is my preferred upgrade tree uh, for Ajax because you will boost yourself and any ally within 40 meters by giving them something called Immovable Force for 50 seconds. So the duration is a lot shorter, but the effective range is a lot bigger. And what you get here is 25 points of armor, but you lose 60% speed. Now the difference between melee defense, which is, which is what this is going to eventually boost, versus armor, is armor is straight up resistant to damage, both missile and melee damage. Whereas melee defense is damage that will hit you, but what you will do is deflect or evade some of those melee attacks. It has nothing to do with range deflection. Range deflection has to do with your shield quality, so that's already predetermined. So armor here is obviously very effective because it is straight up going to reduce the amount of damage you take no matter if you're getting attacked from the front, getting attacked from the flank, getting attacked by range, getting attacked by melee, whereas this is rather limited in my opinion. Now this does last a lot shorter, only 50 seconds, but hopefully with the speed of combat in the game you'll be able to route the enemy as the most typical fighting style for Ajax's army is heavy shielded infantry in front and some higher tier range unit in the back who has expert accuracy which does not hurt your own unit when firing so no friendly fire so you just rain down arrows into your melee line and deal massive damage and you don't need to move all you need to do is have your unit occupy the enemy infantry so your range unit can go to town 
So the losing 60% speed doesn't hurt you that badly. And it's only going to affect you for 50 seconds. So you can still chase after the 50 seconds and after you have defeated the enemy while taking less damage overall. This can be upgraded with the radius boost, increasing the range effective to 60. I don't think this is the best choice as you can easily uh, utilize the 40 meters. It's pretty big compared to the 15 versus the 30 here. 40 meters is pretty effective if you keep your line in a narrow choke or just in a decent concentration where you can just draw the enemy fire. You can pretty much boost everyone on your front line with this. So I don't think it needs to go to 60. It's not the 20 meters going to make a huge difference. Instead, you should go this route to give yourself 200% extra charge resistance. So charge resistance has to do with the effect of knockback. And this is in particular very strong against cavalry or chariots, which are very devastating in the game, although they have been nerfed quite a bit. So if you use heavy units who already has pretty good charge resistance against those chariots and add on another 200%, you're going to be very strong against even some unit who could potentially break your defensive front. So I prefer to go with this one, uh, but I wouldn't rush it. Neither upgrade is essential. Just getting the first one is enough here. And you would spend your other points moving down your skill tree early on. And speaking of moving down, we have the way of Athena and the way of Ares. So by the gods uh, type, you can kind of tell what they're specialized in. For Athena, we're getting melee defense for hero. So yellow is a self boost personal bonus, whereas uh, the red is an ability that you can use. So here we can get five points of melee defense. We talked about melee defense being evasion. It can be upgraded to add seven more. So this is not just two more, even though that's kind of what you see here. But in reality, each of these are individual skills. So you get 2.5% increase to hit point, you get 5 points of melee defense, and then once you get that, and then you get this, you get another 7 points of melee defense, and another 2.5% uh, to hit point. It's not just from 5 to 7, it's plus 5, then plus 7. So it's actually quite strong. You're getting 12 points of melee defense, moving you closer to 100 points, which isn't evade everything, uh, but still a pretty strong uh, evasion to have. Ares obviously means attack. So here we have increased to melee attack, which is your hit rate. And you can also boost your damage. 100 points against heroes, uh, for your hero against sword units. So if you're fighting sword units, you are getting 100 points to melee damage. Melee damage is factored in here with your weapon damage. Uh, it will be factored together with bonuses and your attack rate. It's pretty sizable increase, but only against sword or only against spear. So between these choices, I think thematically, you are much better off going Athena because Ajax is your defensive monster on the field. He is pretty much unkillable if you look at some of the other skills that you can get on him. And he can hold the front with the unit by using skills like the immovable force. So I prefer to go down this route and get a lot of melee defense on him as well as uh, the bonuses that's more consistent. Whereas here, sometimes you'd be fighting against sword, sometimes you'd be fighting against spear. Sometimes you might be fighting against someone who doesn't hold either weapons. There's still axe, there's still range. So in those cases, these skills will be just wasteful. Then leveling up, we have the collector and protector of people. The collector here increases your loot after battle. So treasures here would mean all the resources. You see the icon, uh, gold, food, stone, bronze, and so forth. 30% increase, not bad. You can also get 20 points of influence. This is not the raw percentage influence, but just the point value means you will help increase the percentage a bit faster. And you can double this if you kill the captive after the battle. Or you can just increase the number of captive being captured. This will help you get better recruitment uh, after battle, so replenishment rate, or you can kill them for more morale. Um, it's interesting. It's basically a post-battle uh, boost on the left side here. Whereas protected people will increase all units morale in your Aurora. So there's a base Aurora zone that can be leveled up. Uh, this depends on you know what level your hero is at. So it's hard to say, but it's pretty close in the beginning. You can extend this a little bit. Uh, eight points of morale is not bad. And if you're going to use him as a defensive unit with a bunch of unit who you're going to boost, this is the way to go. I think foregoing some post-battle loot is definitely worth it, especially considering the fact that you can upgrade this 
by giving it something called campaign movement upgrade, which means you can gain additional movement range after a battle. This, in my opinion, is super strong. So this is already a good upgrade uh, compared to what you get over here. And if you look at this one, it's even better. Ancillary drop chance. You get an increased chance to successfully steal spoils from fallen following a victory. So enemy general obviously carry equipment and if you kill them or win the battle, there's always a chance to get those spoils or their ancillary item. In this case, you're increasing that odd. And it doesn't say the actual number, this is quite a mystery, but I almost always go for this one, especially since Ajax has a faction mechanic where you need to spend ancillary item to host celebrations. So you actually have to spend quite a bit of ancillary and getting some awesome ones. There are a lot of really powerful trinkets in this world. Trinkets that can you know heal you on the battlefield and all sorts of powerful effects. So if you could get those, especially unique ones, this obviously will be worth so much more than some extra resource or some extra captive post battle. So I almost always go on this side and almost always upgrade the second tier right away. So by level five, we will have this or level six, actually. Um, no, level five. Correct. So we wouldn't spend the point here. We would just dump it over here or maybe even by level four. You can save up one of the points earlier. Maybe you don't need this five points of melee defense on level three. You get immovable force, level three, skip the point usage, and then spend both of these points on level four so you can get protector of the people's ancillary drop chance right away as early as possible so you can get those items and start stacking them. Then we have a choice between Maida Salamis and Ambassador of Armies. Salamis is the island we're from, and you can see here we can get additional melee attack for all infantry and giant unit in this army. So we obviously specialize in infantry and giants will be a mythical unit that's kind of similar to us. I don't know if running giants is effective for Ajax because he has some really good infantry that are semi giants, but have a lot more men than giants. So Ajax's companion and Ajax's wall have 45 units each and they're kind of like semi giants. Whereas giant unit has only I think 12 units each or 20 is rather small. So I think just getting the melee attack boost on them definitely helps. You can upgrade this by increasing their weapon damage or reducing their attack speed. So between these two, I think it depends on what state of the game you think you're going to be in. If you're in the early game, whereas your units are very low level, so you have some basic spearmen, maybe this will be better. Because if you look at, let's say, our weapon damage, 270. Increasing it by 10, a flat amount, is almost like nothing. Now obviously we do hero damage, so our weapon hurts a lot. If it's a unit, a spearman, a regular spearman, has attack about 23. So 10 point increase is almost a 50% increase. That's kind of huge. But if you have a stronger unit, you could see 30-40 points of attack, especially some of your later elite unit. In that case, 10 points might only be 25%, 20%, 30% of your damage. So it might not be worth it because reducing your attack speed also can increase your DPS. So in this case, our attack interval is four seconds. If we drop it by a second, we're actually going to boost our attack by at least 25%. So in our case for Ajax, if this bonus is going on Ajax, which is I don't think it is because I don't know if we are considered a, a unit, uh, we're a hero. But in this case for Ajax himself being uh, someone who has high attack and also a decent attack rate, this would be a better boost for us. So I just think depending on your army, take a look at them. You can hover over the damage to see what the weapon damage is, what the attack interval is, and just kind of take a gauge of which one would suit you better. Uh, for your army here. Ambassador of Hermes here has to do with fatigue. So you get fatigue reduction on all units for this army. Uh, it's reduction, so resistance, not fatigue immunity. You can also give farther fatigue reduction. I don't think the two combined was still equal fatigue immune, but I think it'll be close. Or you can just start all battles fresh. Now where this comes in handy is because in this game you can replenish in March. 
So if you're stuck on March, you enter battle tired, you can't get it too fresh. Here, if you have this, you can loot, you can raid, uh, same mechanic, uh, raid is the mechanic, or you can march and still enter the battle fresh. So that's a neat thing to do. I think overall, depending on how you play the campaign map, this might be the better choice. Getting higher hit rate plus higher damage or faster damage is probably better compared to uh, being able to stay fresh and also entering battle fresh, mainly because most of his units are going to be pretty stationary. You're not going to run around the map a lot because you're going to be the shield in the army. So I think this might be less effective for Ajax, who tends to hold more defensive positions. Uh, but there are times where you have to march into like a siege and you have to travel far distances. So maybe in those cases, this will be better. So this is definitely something worth considering. It's not saying this side is directly um, much better. Then moving on, we have the typical choice between Divine Challenge and something else. Divine Challenge is where you force yourself and another general to fight it out to the death or not necessarily to the death, but for 45 seconds, you will have to fight the enemy general. You can boost this by uh, increasing the duration to 90 seconds or by reducing the enemy armor by 20 points. I typically avoid Divine Challenge. I don't think it's that strong. I know there's players who want to see this type of duel and perhaps it's kind of cool to use it. Uh, for Ajax, it will be pretty great. I don't think many general can kill him. He has a lot of skills that make him almost unkillable, which we're going to see as he level up here uh, once we move down. So it might be worth getting this. Uh, this doesn't have any rage cost. It has a cooldown of 180. If you can kill off the enemy general, obviously the morale hit would definitely help your army out. And Ajax definitely excels in that, even historically. But, but if we look on this side, we gain Divine Regeneration. And this gives us ability to heal on the battlefield when activated for 55 seconds. So it's not a passive ability, this is an active ability. And I think you can only use this twice on the battlefield. There's a cooldown limit of two activations. You heal 6 hit point per second for 55 seconds. So here we can do the math, 330. It's not huge because your max health is actually... You know, starts out 4,600 and each skill gives you 2.5% and there's other things that can boost it. So you're going to see this number fly uh, closer to 8,000, you know, close to the mid game, if not near the, the late game. So 300 is not a huge amount. So it's not game breaking. You can only do this twice. So that's only 600. Um, but that's still healing. Healing's pretty powerful. And you can gain stamina if you upgrade it. So 50% of stamina if you're tired you get fresh or you can improve the healing and also get rage uh, the healing never mind the healing is not improved i thought the healing bumps up a little that's a different skill that we'll see later on you get still six points but you get rage when activated this is something you can consider i think this rage version could be worth it although i can see value in divine challenge as well so this is a interesting trade-off usually uh, the trade-off for some other generals that we have seen in this guy series is something more offensive and powerful on this side, where the Divine Challenge really doesn't make too much sense, unless you want to play a lot of duels. Uh, but overall, this is an interesting trade-off. I think I might still lean toward Divine Challenge, just because Ajax is so sturdy that I'm not worried about losing them. Whereas, if you're playing a Legendary difficulty, your general might really you know, lose to enemy generals, because they get so many stat boosts. And uh, speaking of how strong Ajax are, uh, is, let's continue. Heavy weapon versus heroic spirit. Heavy weapon boost our armor piercing damage. 30%. It's massive. And you can upgrade again for another 30%. So you see here, this is a good example of showing this is additive, not replacement. Because it doesn't go from 30 to 30. It means you get another 30%. And it's huge. Heroic spirit. 10 points of morale to hero. We start out the game with very high morale. And I don't think we're at risk of losing that in battle. And there are skills later on that can give you unbreakable if you want that. So I don't see the value here. I think getting the damage is much better, especially 30%, 60% armor piercing. You start out with a base of 220 and that's without a special weapon because we just start out with our special shield. The other benefits here is you can extend this morale boost to the point where you're just unbreakable. Doesn't matter what the enemy does, you don't lose morale. Or you can cause fear 
an enemy and reduce their morale. And that's pretty strong. So I think if you're going this route, if you're ready at, you know, 100 points, sure, you might lose a bunch if you get injured, if your army routes out the field. But in those cases, why would you want to be unbreakable? You just get wiped. So maybe fear would be better. And then next level, Shield of Akia and Band of Heroes. So this will give our heavy infantry extra morale and extra damage resistance, which basically is armor. And then we get improvements to their charge or 10% to their melee defense. I think if you're going the route where you're going to play heavy infantry with shield being very defensive, this will obviously be your final destination here. Not only do you get damage resistance, which is basically armor, you get 5% morale for them and also 10% evasion. Band of Heroes has to deal with Paragon units, which is a new addition to the game. This is unique, obviously, to Ajax and Diomedes uh, to have something that can reduce the upkeep and improve the morale, as well as boost either damage, 20% to melee attack, which is huge. Melee attack 20%, that's a very good hit rate improvement, or 20% to melee defense, also huge. So here, it depends on how focused you are with putting Paragon units in Ajax's army. That's the question here. This is not faction-wide boost. They are going to be a good amount of Paragon units, and you can acquire them by beating other armies on the field playing as Ajax. And they're strong. And you can definitely use the morale boost and damage or defense boost. But the question is, at the end of the day, with the other skills that's on Ajax's tree, ability boosts a lot of the infantry, do you really want to put all your Paragon units in this army? That's the question that I think we'll answer when we play a Let's Play with Ajax, because I don't know in a full campaign, because I haven't seen all the Paragon units. I believe they vary in type. There's range ones, there are infantry ones, there are poly cavalry ones. So would all of those work in Ajax's playstyle? Because technically, from what I've seen, you want Heavy Shield Infantry and Ajax Army, maybe a few archers, and then Tulsar, his brother, has also a general in the game that likes to fight alongside Ajax. He has a motivation boost for that, and he's an archer general that can boost a lot of archers. So technically, you want to put your range unit in that army, and they team up together on the battlefield. In that case, you want as many boosts as you can in Ajax Army for Heavy Infantry, and you don't want to maybe put a random Paragon units in his army. So... This is a debatable choice here. Then continuing on, we have Inspirational Leader, increasing recruitment uh, capacity, so how many units you can recruit per turn, uh, your upkeep cost discount, or maybe one more recruitment slot. I don't like this side. I feel like the army is precious in the game. You don't want to lose unit. You rarely have to recruit a full stack from nothing at rank 9. That means you already suffered a huge setback in the game. You lost your units, and now you must recruit them fast. So I don't think this is a good choice here. That means you're already in trouble if you need this. Whereas on this side, you get extra replenishment. 4%, another 4% while in enemy territory, or another 7%. So either 11% straight up or 4% all time. I mean, this will be friendly territory, obviously, and then 4%. In enemy territory this side just feels a lot better and depending on how aggressive you're playing maybe you want four percent enemy territory i don't think it's worth because that's the only replenishment you would be having in enemy territory although you could do this in march i don't know about neutral territory like if you're in the waters can you do this i think you can then maybe there's value because you'll be sailing across the aegean uh, for most of your turns hopping between islands and such, and you can heal doing this. Even if it's low, it's still pretty good. Then we have a choice between Taunt and Terrify. Both Rage cost abilities, first ones we've seen so far. 75 points for either one. Taunt will force an enemy unit and any other enemy unit within 30 meters. So it's actually an area Taunt uh, to go Berserk. Means they will automatically attack whoever is nearby, no command from the AI. It's pretty good. You can trap generals in place this way, you can trap enemy units in place this way, especially cavalry units who want to cycle charge you, 
or you can just force the archers to stay put. And you can upgrade this by increasing duration from 60 seconds to 80 seconds, or by increasing the area. So this would be the effective range, right? You get 10 meters of effective range, which is interesting. Oh, right. Only here do you have a range taunt. This 30 meters is the range of your target. Means if I want to hit unit A, then the unit A has to be within 30 meters of me. So that's a good way to force enemies into fighting Ajax almost all the time because you'd be running up to them, use this at close range. Here you can force a bunch of enemies to fight you. Imagine running up to the center of the enemy line, use it on the middle unit, everything within 10 meters of that unit comes fight you. That's not bad. That's really good, especially if you can survive that. And there's a couple tricks we can show very soon. Terrify, like the name suggests, will cause Terrify, which is a morale hit, 25 seconds of 30 points of morale on enemy unit uh, that's 40 meters away from you. So single target again here, and you can obviously increase that range to 80 meters of choosing your target, or you can get a melee defense a debuff on them as well. So not only do they lose morale, they also lose their evasion. I think here, the area taunt it probably has so much value that I would almost always go with that rather than go with the Terrify. Uh, the morale hit obviously is great, but being able to lock down some enemies, maybe even a general, seems to have great value in my mind. Then at level 11, we have the choice between Battle Fury, which once again is a ability we can use. Uh, it lasts 20 seconds. You can only use this on yourself and it only works when you have greater than 50% hit point. So once you lose that, you lose this ability. This is very similar to Ferocity from Diomedes faction. You basically gain attack, uh, melee attack. So your hit rate goes sky high, 40% that boosts us to almost 100 points, right? And then we have 50% of weapon damage. And that's gonna you know boost our attack by a ton. For 20 seconds, and we go berserk, so we have to fight whoever's nearby, we lose control of the general. I don't like that part, but still pretty strong to open the fight with this, because it has no rage cost. And then you can also improve the damage resistance on top to make yourself 50% tankier, which probably synergize quite well with the not lose 50% of your health part. Or you can increase the duration. So here's 20 seconds, this is 10 seconds. Wait, I'm super confused. Why is this called duration if it goes down but you increase the stat? This should go this should be called attack or something. This makes your 10 second much stronger. 90% weapon damage, 80% melee attack, but lasts a lot shorter. Either way, um, regardless of how they name this one, but we know that it actually boosts your attack. Then we can choose weapon mastery instead, and I think this is the way to go. Because this is passive, you always get this. Here, you have to activate it for 20 seconds every 180 seconds. The fight's not going to go that long. And then if you wait 180 seconds, you might not have the health to enjoy this because it might be disabled because you might be below 50%. Here with Weapon Mastery, you always get 30% extra weapon damage on your hero and you always do 60 extra damage against enemy heroes. And if we look at the boost, you can almost see it. The 30%, it's already huge. And then that's not including the 60, because that doesn't get applied until you're fighting an enemy hero. And you can improve this farther by depending on who you're fighting. The sword unit and the spear unit question comes back. So maybe you could have picked earlier, get 100 points to sword, and here you can pick, get 120 points to spear. And that way, depending on if you're fighting either one, you get extra damage. Obviously, if they're using axe, you're screwed, but that's a minor chance then moving on battle veteran here we see a health symbol just increase health seven percent max health increase and then 2.5 for every skill you can also get passive hit point generation this is what you want you don't need to heal from earlier because it's two use only cooldown only 330 per use this is passive Five hit points per second, no matter what. I think this is extremely strong on Ajax. Or you can just get another 8%, which could be worth because there's another skill that heals later on. So maybe you don't have to get this, but you can. 
See, this is what I mean by Ajax being so hard to kill, because he has potentially three heal abilities on his tree. The choice you have to give up is a chariot. So obviously, some players like to use chariot on heroes, but in this case for Ajax, I think he's distinctly like a giant who is carrying a shield. I don't think you need to put him on a chariot. Giving him this is definitely much better, even thematically speaking. Then we have Warrior's Oath and Protection of Hephaestus, the new god in the game. Warrior's Oath increases or decreases your uh, upkeep costs for the elite units. So this would be like Ajax's companion, Ajax's wall, Telser's archers, and the veteran uh, Lokisha's slingers, I think those units. The one that's part of Ajax's retinue special building, there's a few of them. It makes it cheaper for this army. So I don't know if this is worth again. So if it's faction wide, it might have more value. And here you have the missile elites, the veteran slinger and the Telster's archer, 10% additional upkeep. And then this would be the shielded infantry. So this would be Ajax's companion, Ajax's uh, wall, probably Salamis spearman as well. That's also a heavy one. So I think that's probably going to count. And maybe Salamis swordman. Not sure, uh, but I wouldn't go for this. You know, at rank 13, talking about mid game to late game, you should have a healthy economy if things are going well. 5%, 15%, not gonna be a big deal for you for one army. It's not every army. If this reduced supply chain, like the supply train cost of re recruiting other armies, it'd be better. But in this case, not worth it. Get this 5% armor to all units in the hero's army. And. 8 points of armor for missile units in Hero's Army. You're going to have a few because the playstyle is strong frontline range unit. Now we said that maybe you want to specialize frontline units for Ajax and have Tulsar build all the range. But given how this side works out, I think it's just better get the 5% armor and then just get this on the missile units and have a few Tulsar's archer in the army. It's not going to hurt. It's going to add flexibility when you are hit with, let's say, a night battle situation where you can't uh, have Telstar help you out. And finally, the last set of skill, Herculean Resolve and Pulverize. Herculean Resolve, 25 second duration, 80 rage cost, so rage cost pretty high, 180 second cooldown. Use it on yourself, you become unbreakable for 25 seconds and immortal. Immortal literally means you cannot die. If you're at 1 HP and they hit you, you will still stay at 1 HP. You cannot die. And you're unbreakable. You do, it does only last 25 seconds. So I understand that it's not, you know, forever. It's not making you unkillable, but it's a strong 25 seconds in the game. And you can improve this. You can add a heal to this, where it's 24 seconds of unbreakable immortal. And on the last second, you heal 500 hit point. So obviously, you would use this near death activate it you pretty much go down to one health because you'd be tanking it for 24 seconds fighting and then when you come out of this ability you're at 500. now you might think that's not enough to survive yeah it's not enough to survive but you can probably activate your aristea at that time which will also heal you a bunch and then you can use this probably again after that effect expires or if you have the passive heal from earlier or if you have the active heal from earlier you can boost yourself back up. It's pretty insane. I think Ajax has probably the most survivability of any hero in the game so far, and definitely make him quite unique here. You can throw him into the enemy, area taunt, fight forever in there. And you can also choose to increase the duration. So instead of 25 seconds, you get 40 seconds, which is also not a bad choice, because that 500 health might not last you 40 seconds. And here, since there's no friendly fire, you can area taunt, throw yourself in there, become immortal when you have low health, and then just have all your range units just pour all the fire there. You'll never get hit. All of them all die. You win the game. So because how strong this is, we don't need to look at Pulverize, right? I mean, we see it from other heroes in the game. But Pulverize, once again, rage cost 50, a lot cheaper. 45 seconds on yourself. You gain a bunch of cool things. Uh, you gain... 30% splash attack power. So 30% of your damage will be splashed onto nearby targets. Pretty cool. 
25% speed for chase down, 25% decrease to attack interval for him, it would be a second, similar to what we saw earlier. And then you get 50% charge bonus. So this part is where it kind of goes against how Ajax should be used, right? You're not really charging it in, you're kind of holding down a certain area. So I don't think it fits him. The Herculean Resolve is much better. Now you can obviously upgrade this for extra damage, throw in 30% weapon damage to what we saw earlier, or increase duration to 90 seconds from 45, which is pretty big. Now this doesn't mean you have 90 seconds, then the 180 get reduced to only wait 90 seconds. It's 90 seconds of use, 180 seconds of wait, and then 90 seconds of use and so forth. Uh, but it's still pretty neat. But for Ajax, you just wouldn't consider it. This would just be so much better, whether you want the instant heal afterward or you just want longer immortal, which means you might die the second this time's out. But maybe you might have won the battle by that time. And it's really hard to see that once you hit the late game with this, like earliest you can get this is rank 15. So you're near the late game. It's hard to see that, you know, with 7,000, 8,000 health, that you would need to activate this, right? You will only use this when you're down to like almost no health because you're about to die anyways. And then you get another 40 seconds on top of that. I think you're going to be fine. You're probably going to win your battles at this point. So this is Ajax. I think it's pretty amazing. Uh, definitely a very exciting skill tree, uh, very different from what we have to offer. And it fits very well with his uh, theme, both for his units and even for some of his mechanic where we have a very early auxiliary drop chance which for me being a very greedy player and a collector uh, feels is a great addition to the game even though this is called the collector this is called the protector of the people um, i guess getting the item helps us protect the people better so anyways hopefully you guys enjoy this one and come back next time where we'll take a look at diomedes skill tree so until then bye